The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, and I am so delighted to introduce my guest today, Dr. Ann Hubbard, Superintendent from the Hope School District in Santa Barbara. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Can't wait to dive right <laughs> in to talk all about school education, you know, what's ahead at Hope School District, um, and to talk about your leadership, which is truly exceptional. You are such thank a you. gem in the community, thank not you. only to Hope, but truly to K-12 public education. Thank you. Absolutely. And um, But a great place to start is at the very beginning. We'd okay. love to hear about where you were born and your childhood and your growing up. So let's oh start there. Okay. okay. Well, just a few years ago, not that long. <laughs> right. So, so I was born in San Jose, California. So I'm a California girl. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, was the third of, of three girls. And then later, my parents added another sister. My, my childhood was one that could be described, I think the best word is stable. <laughs> That's nice. My dad, my mother passed away a few years ago, several years ago, and my dad still lives in the house that I was brought home to wow. from the hospital. And so, um, you know, that's the neighborhood. I went to the same, you know, elementary school. I went to the, the same junior high. As a matter of fact, for my third year of junior high, because they have three-year uh, junior highs in San Jose, I was so craving excitement mm -hmm. and the opportunity to be a new student. I switched schools <laughs> simply so I could have the experience of being a new student. <laughs> on your own, you decided you wanted to do this? Yeah, I had, I had been thinking about it because we lived somewhat on a, on a border and I had an after school job at a daycare that was in, you know, that was the other way. Uh -huh. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be walking home from school to my job at the daycare center you know, this is a good time for me to try this, and I it, it was it was great fun. <laughs> Such a leader then and now. Well, I just I really wanted to see what it was like, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. And then both those junior highs fed into the same high school, so I knew I'd be yes. reunited. Not only that, but when I started high school, I knew everybody. So. Was it a large high school? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's fairly it's fairly large. Mm -hmm. um, Leland High School in San Jose. And then, um, you know, went to UCSB, mm -hmm. and I knew I had a, one of those experiences as a student when I was in sixth grade and I had a, a teacher that just um, connected with me, mm -hmm. he got me. And it wasn't just me, I wasn't you know, a, a teacher's pet or anything. It was his approach to students, to the class. It was the first time I really felt a teacher care about the class. Mm -hmm. And I had great teachers, don't get me wrong, but it was one right. of those exceptional times where he would ask our opinion about, about things. We had just great engaging curriculum. We did this science thing called the Berkeley Project where we were dissecting hearts and he brought in just really unique and fun experiences mm -hmm. and really would connect with us as people. And I, I didn't have teachers in my family or anything, but it was at that year that I said, I, I want to be a teacher wow. and I want to be a teacher like Mr. Cook. That's what I want to do. That's great. So um, when I went away to college, I went to UCSB because it was by the ocean mm -hmm. <laughs> and there were surfers. <laughs> and those were my two qualifications. <laughs> and I knew I could, um, at that point, you know, I knew I had looked ahead, what, it, what will I need to do to get my credential? I could major in a variety of things, so I chose communication mm -hmm. because it was something that piqued my interest. Knew the whole time I was going to be applying to the graduate program for the teacher credential program. So, you know, hit the markers. I was involved in an amazing program at UCSB called Project Time, mm -hmm. Teachers Improving Mathematics Education. And I will say, up until that point, I struggled through math in high school and whatnot and thought, okay, I will do anything to avoid taking a math class again ever you know thinking as an elementary school teacher I've got that math down right. I'm good you know right. yeah. <laughs> but um, as I was hitting my prereqs for the credential program I saw some more math that I had to take to, had to take and I panicked anyways I even thought for a while okay fine I won't be a teacher what else will I do you know that's because how much math, math was an impediment mm -hmm. and then 
I thought, buckle up, Anne. You know, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Face your fears. Get in there and take that math class. So I took the math class, and that was taught by um, Professor Wiseglass. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you went through UCSB, but... I did, but didn't have... Okay, mm -hmm. so he, he taught an amazing approach where for the first time we were doing, you know, algebra problems, and I had a fairly good concept of basic algebra, but advanced algebra, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Well, he brought in this manipulatives and algebra tiles, and it was like, I get it, mm -hmm. I see it, mm -hmm. you know, I, I fully understand what's going on, and it, again, was one of those aha moments where it sparked this, like, desire to, what other math don't I know that now I can know? That's fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. And Dr. Weisglass tapped me for a program to be an intern for Project Time. So then I, at the ripe old age of, I think I started at 20, um, I got trained to teach math lessons, very specific lessons that were generated out of Project Time, kindergarten through high school. Okay. And um, they would go in, the professors and the people with Project Time, to train the teachers, and interns would actually take over and instruct the classes. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching kindergarten through high school, but very specific curriculum in this math curriculum right. um, and just got this great experience as a you know a fairly young adult <laughs> um, teaching like at Cabrillo High School you know at the age of 21 and I'm teaching these high school seniors and I mean it was a lot of fun and I just all of a sudden had this affinity like this love deep love I even had a t-shirt that said I heart math like <laughs> <laughs> so then I started rethinking, uh-oh, do I want to be an elementary school teacher or do I want to do a single subject mm -hmm. credential? But I stuck with the elementary and, um, and that, you know, that's what brought me into, Launched you in. yeah, yes. into education. Well, now I know what to get you for a gift, an <laughs> I Heart Math t-shirt, I love it. And I, I hear a lot of commonalities between Mr. Cook and Mr. Wiseglass, mm -hmm. I think, in terms of bringing the real real world mm -hmm. to, you know, to apply into your instruction. Mm -hmm. And it really piqued your interest. Mm -hmm. It really got you going Yeah, as a it learner. definitely was formative in how I was going to approach education as, exactly. an, as the teacher. Both as a student mm -hmm. and then as a teacher. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating how that happened. And also a commonality is your drive, you know, yeah. from saying, I'm going <laughs> to ch change junior high schools to knowing what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. um, even in sixth grade and having that career path you had a goal in mind and you mm -hmm. knew, okay, I want to go to UCSB for these reasons. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. when I finish UCSB, this is what I want mm -hmm, to do with it. Mm -hmm. And then the experience you had in Project Time, yeah. K through 12, fascinating. Really, Again, really a big impact. Yes, a big Definitely impact. one of those perspective changers. Yes. So when you finished UCSB and mm -hmm. had your credential, that's mm -hmm. where you received mm -hmm, your credential, mm -hmm. you began teaching then. And I did. It seems like you have taught in multiple different settings. Can you share with us sure, some of the different sure. settings? Okay, yeah. Great. So I, you know, at that time, you really needed to be bilingual um, to teach in Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. So. I, when I was going to school um, for the credential program, I had become a live-in nanny as well. I mean, the, the love of kids has always, you know, yes. been pervasive throughout my, my time. But so I, I would have loved to have stayed in Santa Barbara and had this amazing family that I was connected to and helping to raise two fabulous young girls. But um, you had to be bilingual, really have those skills down to get a job in Santa Barbara. Very few people out of my cohort at UCSB were able to get jobs, mm -hmm. and the ones that did were bilingual or males. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll I'll head back to San Jose, where you know where where I was from, and applied to a couple different uh, districts and spots. And at that time, I got offered a position in a public school in Los Gatos for a second grade spot. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I got offered a position teaching sixth grade at a private school where my younger sister had attended um, that was opened by actually a, 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 a woman whose kids I had gone all through school with. She wanted this new approach to education, educating the whole child. And she was she's an amazing, inspirational woman and had no background in education. She was a mom to nine children. Wow. And she thought, I'm going to open my own school then, the way I think it should be. So this school had started, my sister had attended, and I got offered a job teaching sixth grade there. And um, in talking with both positions, when I talked 
to the head of schools at the private school and said, you know, I love math. She said, I think there's a way I can actually have you teach, you know, the sixth grade, you know, inclusive teacher, but also have you teach some of the middle school math. Mm. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to, this is, where, this is yes. where I'm going to start. And I thought that um, I would just do that for a few years. I wanted to build up my retirement and all that kind of stuff. I thought, well, I'll do that. It's a great start. Um, and I just, I loved it. I love, love, loved it. And year one, year two, year three, you know, and I brought on um, one of my best friends from high school and college roommate. Um, she had gotten her master's degree in English. I brought her on as a teacher. And we built, the, the middle school started as one shared portable. And together we started, you know, with other people, started building that middle school program to where they ended up, you know, with a whole middle school campus. And it was a great experience to actually get to build, yeah. you know, the program along with the founder of the school who shared that passion for creating. Her motto was a gifted education for all. Why is it only gifted kids get these enriching experiences and a focus on, you know, much more than just the core curriculum? Why don't all kids get that? And so that was the atmosphere where I really got to hone Wow. Hone my skills. That's also where I met my husband. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Bonus. Exactly. <laughs> um, and, then, um, and then it was time to make a jump into to public school. Mm -hmm. So I um, went from this uh, very comfort zone of it was less than a mile from the house I grew up in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and very much, you know, the, the families I had grown up with. Um, and I jumped from there to an inner city school in San Jose Unified um, with a, a, a very challenging population. Is this and an so elementary school? This was actually, I was offered a job teaching math, math. middle school math. Okay. So that was very attractive to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, this is going to be great, pre-algebra. Pre and, um, and that was just such culture shock, so difficult. Um, jumping in and you see these kids that have such a different experience as children than, than I had, mm -hmm. than I had been exposed to or that I was aware of. And it was very, very difficult to process because I saw, oh, this child needs this, this child needs this. Oh, they don't know their times tables, you know, but, oh, they're, you know, this person uh, just got it, moved into the foster care system, this, you know, and I would just come home beat and my husband would say, you can't save them all. And I'd say, how can I not? You yeah, know, right. of course I have to save them all. Which ones am I going to choose? Right. You know, I have to save them all. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, the focus was math. I was a math teacher. But at the same time, I was really trying to think of, you know, what can we do? Like, how do we serve these kids? Right. I had a great group of colleagues. We were very, very tight. And I think when you get in those challenging situations, mm -hmm. You do. You become a tight knit group, and um, we made some some changes. We created um, families. Mm -hmm. We decided to put the kids in families so that they would have a same group of people that would have an eye on them and know. Like, it, you weren't just set in different. You know, you weren't traveling here to there. Nobody really keeping an eye on you. Right. And so um, that was that was a unique and fun experience. And as you're saying that, it's just, it strikes me because when you first started today when, at this interview, mm -hmm. we were talking about your family having grown up and that you would describe it with stability. Mm -hmm. And um, that word rings true here because what you found was that these students did not have oh, stability. No. Yeah. And here you brought in, how can we make it mm -hmm. work for them and let's create a family. So mm -hmm. I just think it's really interesting that, that loop that you created for them and the experience at your private school mm -hmm. because there you had a tight-knit group of teachers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, this focus on students and you really carried that through to your, your next assignment mm -hmm. there. I, I think at, at my first spot at Alameda Country School, I was really able to hone my instructional strategies, my curriculum, mm -hmm. you know, my, my approach where it was super easy to have those connections. You just, you didn't have to deal with these ancillary issues that kids, I mean, of course you kids have, sure. even if they come, you know, from, from families that have stability or have income, you know, that they don't need to worry about. They still have issues, but to step into Steinbeck, it was, these kids don't have stability. They don't have economic stability. They don't have family stability. Mm -hmm. 
They don't have emotional stability. <laughs> they don't have academic stability. Right. So many factors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you go from there to administration? And and, and I don't want to jump over to yeah, the schools okay. that you that you in which you taught. So mm -hmm. let's talk about some of those. In yeah. Well, I, I jumped from there. Mm -hmm. my, my my previous elementary school had an opening. Okay. And um, I at the same time um, my my son when I married my husband I married into two kids that he was raising fully 100% mm -hmm. and so I became instant mom to my son and my daughter who were five and two at the okay. time um, and uh, my son had been at the private school with me and then when I left the private school we put him in a public school the same year I went to public school mm -hmm. our neighborhood public school and he was having a difficult time so then my former elementary school had an opening and I thought well I that's a phenomenal great school <laughs> that's where I went yeah. if I take this position there he can come mm -hmm. with me my daughter was starting pre uh, was starting kindergarten I thought this will be a great family thing you know because we'll all be at the same place I know this this is comfortable so I took that position um, after teaching there while teaching there I became pregnant with my daughter had an amazing babysitter, so amazing to the point that when I would go to pick my daughter up, she would cry because oh. I was picking her up. <laughs> I'd say, this is not right. right, you right. Know? That, there's something here. So I looked to my husband and I said, I, I think I need to work part time. He's a, he, he was a battalion chief on San Jose Fire. And okay. so he was gone big chunks of time. And so I, you know, I was doing a lot. And I said, I think I need to work part time. Like, this isn't right. Uh -huh. And at that point, my former, the former private school, had come to me and said, what, what would it take to bring you back? You oh. know, so then we were willing, I was willing to talk and say, look, if I can teach just math part time and my kids can go to school, we can make this work. Mm -hmm. And so they, um, they were offer, able to offer me the same salary, That's two fantastic. free tuitions and the exact classes I wanted to teach. How could I say no? Right. <laughs> so, um, so I jumped back into that school for another five, five years, I guess it was. During that, at the end of that, you know, kind of towards that run, I started thinking about what would I do next. I had always wanted to get a master's degree, mm -hmm. my, um, but raising kids and my husband working his way through the different ranks in the fire department, and he finished as an adult his bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, okay, now it's my time. I get to get go back and get that master's degree. And um, I really thought I just wanted to get the master's degree. I wasn't thinking administration. I was thinking maybe down the road when I'm done teaching, I was thinking about maybe working for a teacher preparation program. Mm -hmm. How can I help shape teachers to, to fit what students need? Mm -hmm. And then um, I looked around the different programs and I chose Cal Poly. <laughs> And my husband goes, excuse me? <laughs> but um, they had a program that we, I could have done on weekends. And then we started looking at, we'd always liked the Central Coast area. And at that time, they had had a, a horrific drop in the housing market. We had the opportunity to buy a house for very, very cheap. And we said, okay, let's, let's buy a house down there. I'll live down there. We'll move the kids down there. My husband and older kids were up in San Jose. He was working. And we did this, you know, split family kind of thing yes. while I went and got my master's. Which happened at again later. Oh! Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> did in it, yes. Big time. So, <laughs> So we, we bought a house in Paso Robles. I went to Cal Poly. I had an amazing time. When I started the program, I didn't sign up for the administrative credential part, just the master's. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Jenna Luce, who uh, runs the program, Educational Leadership, he called and said, um, I think that you're making a mistake not getting an administrative credential. I said, no, I can assure you I'm not. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in being an administrator. And he said, no, I really think you, you should do it. He said, what do you want to do? And I said, I think someday I want to ed, end up in a teacher preparation program. He said, it will broaden your perspective. I thought, okay, that makes sense. Sure, yeah. sign me up. But I don't know where to do field work because right. I'm going to be living in Paso. I don't know a soul. And um, he said, we'll help you. We'll help you. So I started the program. He said, do you want to be in Paso Robles? I said, sure. He said, let's put you up middle school. That's where I'd been teaching most recently. I said, that sounds great. I took an internship, an administrative internship at uh, Flamson Middle School. Loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved it. I was working with the AVID program. I was, I was doing, I was creating, I brought on the No Place for Hate. I was getting out with the kids. And I'm like, wait, I like this. I still, not only do I have a class, I have more kids yes. and, and making more connections. And 
Um, it just was so much fun. And then, yes, I'm a little bit of an overachiever. I thought, okay, <laughs> I do like this administration thing. I should really make sure I have a full picture of it. So I requested um, an internship at an elementary school as well. So I took on uh, another administrative internship at Butler Elementary School in Paso Robles. And I thought, I might as well round it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I had the gift of not having to work uh -huh. and just be in the master's program. Right. And many of my cohort colleagues were working as well. So I thought, I'm going to take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. And I took on a high school administrative um, position, a, you know, field work position at Mission Prep High School in San Luis Obispo. So I was getting, you know, elementary through high school, two publics, one private, and really tr getting to, to have that full experience. I think anyone who knows you and those who've just gotten to know you are not surprised by this, Anne. <laughs> the fact that you um, but, actually take it on and want to get the full full picture. Yeah, you know, to and do something what an opportunity really well. that I had. It was a right. gift to be able to do that. Right. So why not take advantage of it? Well, we need to get into sure. Hope Elementary School. Yes. And by getting to Hope, uh, school district, I mean, not just the school, mm -hmm. but um, y you came by way of all of these different experiences, mm -hmm. plus most recently, superintendent in Cayucas. Mm -hmm. um, but you've been in Santa Barbara Unified as well. Mm -hmm. So you've been, I mean, we've, Central Coast has got it covered. Um, and in all these wonderful ways, truly, with, yeah. with the you learning as you've gone mm -hmm. on. But but now you're at Hope uh, School District in Santa Barbara, and I think that when the position was opened, it was an opportunity where you need you didn't have to take it, but mm -hmm. it was just perfect for you at yes. the time. Yeah. So say say why it was perfect uh, at the time, the yeah. size and the people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I took the position in Cayucas, the, mm -hmm. the, the actual plan was the family was going to move up eventually. We had taken in my niece, mm -hmm. and she was finishing Santa Barbara High School. We thought, we can't leave her. Right. her we can't make her move her senior year. So the idea was that she was going to stay. My husband was going to stay. My son was at Washington, loved Washington. And my daughter had finished Santa Barbara Middle School. And I said, don't start San Marcos where you've signed up. Come up with me to back to Paso. And I, I brought her over to Mission Prep, mm -hmm. where I had done you know, an internship, knew the people, tried to convince her, this is a great place for you to go to high school. You could go to Paso High. She still had friends from when she had gone to elementary school there. And she said, Mom, I, I made the golf team. I'm in the entrepreneur program. I just want to start it and get that experience. Mm -hmm. I was doing my doctorate. Right. And I thought, during the week, I'm working. I'm doing my doctorate. During the weekends, we're together. I'm mom. Okay, we can do this. You know, we can do this. And after, you know, heading into the second year now and knowing this is long term, it got a little harder. Mm -hmm. I missed out on things right. as a mom and it yes. was like, oh, this isn't really working. Yeah. Yeah. So we started thinking, okay, when the right position opens and I'm only going to jump for the right position, um, then I'll, 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 let's see what happens. I'll throw my hat in a ring when it's right and, and we'll see what happens. Well, lo and behold, Hope came up, started really doing some research on Hope and looking into things, going on all the websites, reading like the past year's worth of board minutes and just looking at it and saying, okay, this, you know, I, I, this is what I would do here and this is what I would do here. And I got interviewed and got offered the job that day. And it, it was a, kind of like, oh, I thought I'd have time to talk to my board. Right. I thought I'd so quickly. have time to, to mull it over. Um, but I went back and, and, you know, called a meeting with my board up there and, and, you know, how to talk and said, I think this is the right thing to do. So. Well, lucky for all of us, <laughs> truly. And you said it had to be a perfect match for you, but it yeah. really needed to be a perfect match for them too. And mm -hmm. really that uh, shown through the day one, you really came in and had a lot of uh, challenges ahead, yes. honestly, maybe more mm -hmm. than even in other districts for a first day, oh, first year. Yeah. Hope School District, for those viewers who are watching today, have three elementary school, mm -hmm. Hope Elementary, Monta Vista, and, and Viaja Valley. Via Valley. Thank you. And um, such an elegant district, it wonderful really neighborhoods, great families and families teachers. Families are amazing. Amazing. Staff is amazing. And we, we won't go into all of the details mm -hmm. today, but there were just some extraordinary challenges, fiscal, Definitely. that I'd say at the end of this, now that we're beginning a new year, mm -hmm. boy, can you look back and see the successes of the yeah. entire community and a lot to do with your leadership, but truly many of the partners that you have. Oh, it was, it was a community effort across yeah. the board. It, it truly was. And I think this would be a great opportunity for you to um, share, share with me sure. and so our viewers can hear um, 
maybe some of your appreciation for that community oh in my terms gosh. of hope and, and what, you've, what yeah. you've been able to accomplish. Forget the I Heart Math teacher. I want an I Heart the Hope School <laughs> District community teacher. There we go. They it really, um, you know, walked in big, just huge fiasco. To, you know, to sum it up, it really felt like I walked onto a ship as a captain and realized the ship was sinking quickly and, um, and panic. And I didn't know these people, you know, and so... I didn't know what they were going to do, but boy, right. immediately people started in with what can we do? What do we need? What, you know, let, let's, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that. Let's, let's do this. And that, that show that shown through right away. And I realized very quickly what a special community it was. Yes. I had a, um, a defunct foundation mm -hmm. and I, I met early on before we realized how quickly I was going to need them to reform. Mm -hmm. I met early on with uh, Holly Leck who had been on the previous foundation and she was jazzed about, yeah, let's get this going again. And we thought we'd have time. We, had, we really started crafting out like a two or three year plan. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, no, we need it now. <laughs> <laughs> and Holly led that, that charge and that call. The community, on a short notice, by November, had raised $255,000 to save um, you know, several different positions that, were, that we were going to have to cut in order to meet these budget goals. And that just spoke volumes to me about this was a community that was invested in education, that cared about their schools, and that, that cared about um, the employees, and just really wanted to, to keep the specialness about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you go through challenges or, or a struggle. And I, my feeling is people generally come out of those things. When you go through it together with somebody, right. you, you come out stronger and very, very connected. And that's where we are right now. I mean, I, I literally, I get tears when I was thinking about it. I love this community. Mm -hmm. My teachers, my support staff, my district office staff, my principals, the students, you know, the families, the PTAs, they are just comprised of people that are so dedicated, so talented, and really will do whatever it takes. And um, right now, the foundation is head up, headed up by um, an amazing board. Dave Hicks heads it up. And these people work full time mm -hmm. in, a, in like difficult jobs. Right. Yet they will they will meet and they will plan and they will, you know, they will put together these amazing events and things that are the, the measure S part our parcel yes. tax. We didn't go out to, you know, districts, bigger districts will hire firms right. to lead these efforts. We didn't have the money to do that. This was a group, Susan, of seven people, mm -hmm. six parents, a grandparent and me, eight people right. that got, rolled up our sleeves, pounded pavement, <laughs> just, um, you know, we had a fabulous vol volunteer, um, one of our parents is a council member, Eric Freeman, he had had a, somebody run his campaign, Molly Culver said, I'll, for free, mm -hmm. I'll give you advice. I mean, just amazing, but really, this was a grassroots effort of this small group of people pounding on doors, creating flyers, going, I don't know, that looks great, nobody <laughs> was a graphic designer, but um, just... That and then we passed, you know. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. but that's yeah. what that's what speaks of my community, right? And and what an amazing place that is. I love that, and I think that's a perfect place to just put our pause for sure. today. And we've been able to cover so much of your background and history, your education, your your uh, your your arc in terms of how <laughs> you landed here. But we we didn't cover a lot as well, and. And if I could just say a few words in terms of your lifelong learning and passion mm -hmm. for it, you did just finish your doctorate mm -hmm. through all of what you just mm -hmm. described, um, your compassion for people and families, your mm -hmm. family, your own family has so many um, dynamic features mm -hmm. about it that <laughs> I think are just part of who you are. And you, you as a leader, uh, you know, you've given so much credit to every member of Hope School District, mm -hmm. of which is due. Mm -hmm. But I think it's due to you as well, mm. the leadership that you have um, provided. You talked about stepping on a ship that was sinking. Mm -hmm. And talk about <laughs> changing course and is really headed towards great things. Yeah, so it truly really is. Really appreciate your time today. And thank you for well, sharing your you. story. Thank you for letting me share it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, Susan Salcido. Thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Education Matters.